All right, I think I'm all set. <laughs> Let's start. So uh, welcome, everyone. My name is uh, Rui Adorno. Uh, whoa. <laughs> uh, so I'm a local from Montreal. Uh, I've been living here for 11, almost 11 years now. So it's one of my greatest accomplishments all my life, like becoming a Canadian citizen. So yeah, I really love the people here. really love uh, the country. Just the weather at this time of the year starts. <laughs> it's not so great. But yeah, and I recently, it's been three months now, uh, almost four, I joined NPM. So now I work at the open source team with Darcy. You might have seen his talk yesterday. <laughs> yeah, so you can find me at these places. And I have, before anything, I have to also thank Joel because I totally just stole his CLI slide, the <laughs> slideshow. <laughs> so that little guy there is actually Joel over there. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're here today to talk about CLI, right? Uh, I hope everyone here loves CLI, right? Uh, quick show of hands. Who, who uses CLI on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, OK, that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. It is the right crowd. <laughs> so yeah, this is a quick talk. And the goal here is just like uh, for people to start People that are not doing yet start creating their own common lines. People who maybe are already doing, maybe you learn about a thing or two. Uh, so yeah, let's get to it. Quick overview. So we're going to go through understanding CLI commands. Uh, just a quick basic of how to de define a reusable command. How to compose commands using Unix pipelines. Uh, and then add interactivity. Like let's sprink sprinkle a little magic on top of it. And then go, like, of course, let's use Node.js with it. So yes, this quick disclaimer. You're about to see a graphic designer by formation giving a talk about the command line interface, which, yeah, and I think uh, it makes a lot of sense. It is a great user interface, and uh, there's something that uh, maybe sometimes people don't realize. Uh, because our, our very communication like, is, is word-based, right? We, we th think in word terms. Word, they, they link into things in our minds, right? So, and developers are always looking to reuse things, right? And words are really key words in our minds, and we, we're going to map them into things we want to do, right? So that's what makes the the CLI, the command line interface, so powerful because basically the commands, they're, they're reusable stuff, right? right? We, we love to reuse stuff. Uh, and basically we're storing commands, we're doing our workflow, and these commands is just something that, okay, oh yeah, now I need to do this thing, oh yeah. So maybe, it's, maybe the command is run, maybe the command is like, run my project. It's gonna map to something in your mind, it's gonna make sense to you, and it's going to be reusable. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to go through a bunch of quick examples. So very adventurous here, going to do a lot of live coding stuff. But it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's fun stuff. So uh, I'm so not going to jump into Node yet. So quick thing, like basically here I'm going to use the cat command. Uh, basically that prints out contents of a file, right? So here I'm just going to define like, OK, I want to create a new command. It's going to be full. Uh, like for now, it's only like it's only gonna be catting things. Like gotta just like print it out. So that's like step like one, the very most basic thing. Like defining an alias is one of the ways to create your own command. In this case, doesn't do much because well, that's already a built-in thing. So, but sometimes you want to maybe use a variation of, of a command, right? Command that takes a flag. Like okay, like git status. So like git status usually. It's going to print all this info, right? And let's say you like the S flag, which turns into this more pretty printed thing, uh, way of uh, dis displaying your, the status of your Git repo right now. So yeah, OK, let's make OK status. OK, that's going to be my new command. Like I, I like that thing. Like I want to be reusing that. So from now on, every time, OK, I want to do status, but the way I like it. So you, you basically like git status. Like you have you have that that alias is a new command you can use and reuse. 
And you can also like make it more versatile. Like the, there is also the function, uh, the bash function way of defining it. So basically, in this one over here, I'm just going to, hey, get status. Uh, and then I'm just basically going to be setting a parameter. So now I can send down the S uh, flag or some other ones. Like not, yeah, so uh, it's going to do the very same thing the, the other one did, right? Uh, but basically, just to show, showcase the bash functions too. Uh, is also something we can do. So yeah, using Node, like fun thing I did too, like I just went on NPM real quick, like let's find a useful uh, library we could use to do something fun, right? So basically in this case, I'm just using some load library, I'm just invoking the Node runner itself, and I'm requiring right away, right from bash, that command, and what it does is that, okay, if there is an offensive word there, it returns uh, true, then it's uh, gonna print blocked. Otherwise, it's just gonna print whatever was in it, right? So let's try it out. That starts to be more fun, right? So I, I already, for the sake of like making sure it doesn't derail too much, it's already NPM installed. <laughs> so let's just uh, create this new command here. So okay, node gonna print that, and it's gonna require offensive Words, filter. Thank you so much, whoever did this uh, command. <laughs> and uh, it's going to take the, uh, the word as an argument. I'm going to use that. And then if it's blocked, if it returns true, I don't want to show anything. And otherwise, let's print whatever was that uh, there. And then I close this thing. And then I close my function. So let's print save. Uh, oh, hi. Yay, there's nothing offensive in this word. It works well. So let's print save. Oh, fuck. Oh, block. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> so yeah, basically just quick demo on, on how to use a node module, like even within Bash itself. Uh, yes, so moving on. Uh, yeah, that's, I think this is an interesting thing. Like took me a while to, to realize as, as a designer, like I'm, I've been work, learning these things my, uh, on my own for a long time. So basically, yeah, and it, you can also just define any file. Any file that is in your path environment variable is going to be available as a command, as long as that file is executable. So you can even like, from the local installed modules, like usually they're not available as uh, command lines, right? Even, if though, even though if they provide uh, command line uh, interfaces. Let's say Joel's thing over there, CLI slides. It, it is a command line thing, but uh, right now it's not available at all. So if I go on and just like export my path, and I'm gonna contact, like this here, I'm concatenating it with whatever was already there, getting my current directory here, and like, okay, let's get everything that is in node modules bin, and let's, that be part of the path. So now, the command slides thing that I have, it's available. It's not going to work because it takes some other arguments. It's not the point. The point is that now the, your internal uh, node module bin, like whatever local modules you have installed, they're available as a command for, for this prompt now. Like, uh, and it's very, very useful too. Like you can define your own path. Uh, you can have your own bin in your user local folder and be dropping your, your reusable com commands there. Uh, it's something I do a lot, yeah. Um, yes, also any, yeah, package JSON script. That, that, this is a super handy way of like just for project-based. I know here is, uh, the crowd is most Node.js, so probably you all know this one already, uh, but it's a mandatory one I had to mention, right? So in your package JSON, you can define scripts, and those scripts, they can be run anytime later. So npm run, you can uh, npm run, hello. As long as hello is available as a script for that package JSON, it is going to it is going to run. You can reuse. A uh, handy thing is that this way you can even reuse CLI tools that are local to that project without having to do the the, the path thing. Like npm does it for yourself, basically. So, uh, package JSON also supports the bin property. So basically, this allows you. This this is what we know the 
publish uh, the, the maintainers of module. That's what we use when we want to distribute uh, command line tools on NPM, right? Then people can just NPM install it and like conveniently reuse it. So I tend to, to try to share all the things that I do when I find it like a little bit useful. I'm going to make it a, a quick node, node module, you know, push to NPM. Then myself, I'll be reinstalling that later whenever I switch computers, whenever something happens. And other people can reuse, right? You can share to your coworkers. Oh, I, yeah, I have, a, I have a script for that. Like, just NPM install this thing. It's going to do it. So, and here we get to the composing commands, yeah, which is the powerful thing about uh, Unix. Like the idea, Unix has this idea where uh, every command is its own thing, and it tries to be like really specific. Some of them are really not, like some of them get really busy with all, all the kinds of arguments and, and, and powerful things it does, but the idea is that you're gonna, you're gonna run uh, ls, it's going to list the files that are in that folder, right? You're gonna run cat, it's, uh, it's going to like print the contents of that file. You, so you can do all, uh, you can actually like combine those together and start creating like, okay, now I'm creating my own stuff. I'm reusing the basic, the basic commands that are available. You might be reusing some other commands that you installed from, from, from some other uh, open source projects. And you can be combined them together and create your own workflow and you can share it to people. It's, so basically, yeah. A couple more examples, and this is where things start to get more risky because this might fail. Anyhow, let me see. Yeah, I think last time I had to delete this one. So uh, let's just say uh, find. Find is a command that allows you to list all the files. It's going to be like recursively traversing all the folders and like uh, printing all the files, and you can specify arguments to start filtering out. Like in this case. I'm filtering, okay, just file that has the name that ends in .js. So it's going to print all the files. And, oh, surprise, there's a lot of JS files in my node modules. So let's say, okay, I want to get word file. I think I make sense of a command that I can reuse later where I could like, oh, let's get all these files. And then I want to grab. Grab is one very handy command that allows you to filter items. So in this case, yeah, I wanna, yeah, I wanna be able to just like filter out one, one of these. So get word file, it's going to traverse all these files, and I want to just like, oh, just give me the ones that have CLI on it. So you see the other one is gone, and if I just, okay, no, actually just word. So all the CLI stuff is gone, it just prints the one that has words, uh, word on it, which, which is offensive word filter there. So, this is like very basic uh, first example of using the Unix pipeline, right? So the idea here is basically like uh, the pipeline, you're combining the output coming from a command into the second command, right? So this is, because it, it, it kind of you connecting pipelines and then the stream of information flows through them. And this is like, this is the origins of the stream library in a module in Node.js which I always had a hard time with. <laughs> and I wish I didn't miss the other talk <laughs> from Matteo about it. But anyways, uh, so all these com uh, concepts can actually come from the Unix pipelines where you can connect the commands together, right? So Xargs is a handy utility that helps out because when you're connecting those pipelines, you're connecting the standard output into the input of the next one. So when you have a command like uh, cat that wants to receive an argument, XR is going to help you out. It's going to, okay, okay, not, not connecting the standard input. I, I'm gonna read that thing as an argument. So in this case, um, let's make another handy command, print file. So again, my, the same recipe we had last time with the name and filter in JS. Then let's just select one. Uh, so basically continue from the idea of the last command, but this time let's print the contents of the file with ju we just select, right? So print file and okay, I want that word file again, but this time uh, print it. Uh, it failed. Uh, yeah, not going to debug that one, but <laughs> 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 uh, 
let's just let's just do it this way. I'm going to do it manually because I probably just got something wrong here, and I'm just going to manually, like instead of using the argument, I'm just going to hard type the word here, uh, where the argument usually goes, and let's uh, cat that. And there you go. Like my my word file, like I can see that that, that module is actually re very simple, very simple. It's just like reading from a term to block JSON, and like and it does the logic. Oh yeah, should I? Does it match anything in there? Return true. Otherwise, false. Oh no! What happened? Oh no! Oh. Is it rebooting? It was going wow. <laughs> okay, all good, all good. Let me let me move on. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> continue. Yes, you can also write down uh, files from the the pipelines. They have more operators. I'm, this is the only one uh, I'm going to be showcasing. Like, basically, uh, the greater than sign or smaller than. Anyways, it's going to get that stream and dump it into a file. So like very handy too. Uh, in this case, oh yeah, this is, a, this is a fun one, yeah. So let me get back my demo JS. Yeah. So basically this one, uh, let's build a command that's going to, okay, print out from the file I'm gonna send in, and then it's going to replace anything like sad, uh, SED, Oh, I call it sad. Not sure. <laughs> Probably not the right way to call it. <laughs> it is going to replace things, like in place. So it's basically just a string replacement, right? So I'm going to swap a log for error in any, any of the stream of data that is flowing through here, right? And number two is going to be the second argument of my command. So I'm going to save it, write it to a second uh, file. Uh, so let just quick show what's going on here. Demo.js is basically doing the same thing that the other command was doing uh, using the library, but this, this time is a, is a JavaScript file itself. So it's just console log. So what I want with this is just, okay, let's replace uh, log with error for any file that, uh, that I send into this thing. So make error, and I send in demo.js, and okay. And I want to save uh, an error.js uh, from that. So I run it, and now I can, say, I can see error.js has the same thing, but replace log with error. So basically showcasing the, the writing to a file operator using the greater than operator and multiple arguments with the number two there. So yes, I hope we have seen the light. Like, okay, okay, okay this is good, this is good. I can, I can actually reuse this, like, it's not, it's not, uh, uh, rocket science, right? Uh, hopefully, you're all good to go, like composing new, new workflows from the basic Unix commands that you already know. And then you're probably gonna be interested in learning about the, oh, some other more, like, because the more you know, the more commands you start learning about, the more ideas you're gonna have, oh yeah, this can actually be automated like that, because could use that other uh, tool that I just learned about, yeah. So, and I like to introduce like a very, very cool handy feature uh, basically, a unique, also a Unix command that just allows you to turn any of this stream input like into interactive interfaces. So you can like just build things that are going to turn into interactive lists, and you can select one, and you can do whatever you want with the output of that uh, stream. So yeah, uh, basically, uh, I I call it IPipe2, the interactive pipe2 thing. Uh, but the command is uh, IPT. So given any list in the, in the shell, you can like, okay, listen the files there. Uh, so I can pipe that list of files into IPipe2, and it's going to build an interactive interface with it. Oh, nice. And then I can just like select one, and what it does is just, just prints uh, whatever you select. So it's going to allow you to connect that to some other stuff. Then you can start creating really handy workflows, right, with that. So in this case, yeah, I'm just, just selecting. Oh, yeah, I have this other handy uh, command here that, okay, 
let me just like uh, interactively. Uh, oh, nice. Oh, cool. Cozy mood. Oh, no, what is going on? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, you're used to like CD, like in order to navigate, but it would be handy if you could just like, oh, yeah, like, now I can see the list of files. I can just like select the folder in it and like, oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Very basic, just, just like showcase some examples. Uh, another, yeah, another very basic one. Uh, you can have like a list of branch for a Git. Git, uh, Git also like because it has so many lists, right? It has list of branches, list of comments, list of uh, remote uh, uh, repos you might point into. So you can do all sorts of like crazy ideas. Okay, let me, let me connect the, the, the list of branch. Then I pipe that into the interactive thing. And then I can like, well, why not? I can check out into a different branch, right? So yeah, okay, yeah. So I had to check out, but like in this case it failed because I had some modified files, but you can get the idea. Uh, and uh, yeah, and it's, it has some uh, handy options too. Like in this case, uh, I have this command for printing files, and it's going to be a, a listing all the files in the folder, and I'm gonna use this multiple argument at dash m that is going to allow me to select multiple items on that list. So instead of being just like selecting one, it's going to be like more like filtering out the, the unselected files. So, oh yeah, let, let's print all of the things that I selected in there. Um, so print files is going to show me a handy list. There is now a checkbox sort of, and I can go and like, oh yeah, let's select the demo and the error. And it's gonna pipe that info to, into cat that is going to print both of them, and we've seen that earlier, and you can see this is the same thing. So, uh, handling file names, uh, basically, it also has like this very handy thing when you're dealing with uh, Git, that when you're doing like Git status, in this case, that same fancy view with the uh, notification in there, like showing the, showcasing the status for each file, right? Um, I'm gonna use this handy dash p option that is going to just try to parse a fi uh, the file path out of the item itself so that I get rid of like the D's and M's and, and question marks so that I can actually reuse that path right away and I can like, I can just print the info for that one. So as you can see the list still has the metadata in the beginning, but as soon as I select one, the next command works because the dash p command like get rid of all the things that are not part of the file path there, the file name. Yeah, and uh, yeah, last thing to showcase is the fuzzy finder autocomplete mode. So basically I can like, and I'm also going to take that, the uh, opportunity here to show that you can also send in as a file name. So like I can like send in just IPT, like the package JSON. So it's going to explode like the file into mo like for each line. It's going to become an, an item, and then the argument is actually dash a. <laughs> this is wrong in the slide there. Sorry about it. Uh, but then it's, it's just like it's just going to filter out basic based on what you're typing, like a, an autocomplete kind of thing. You can like oh description. So oh yeah, selecting that line. So it's going to output it. So yeah, all crazy ways to like um, do cool commands like interactive commands with it. Uh, just throwing out like a real quick uh, thing I put together for the demo. Uh, how many of you know about the Pacoche uh, CLI? Like it was recently released as a known CLI. So basically it's, a, it's one of the NPM internals. So it allows you to like get fetch metadata, fetch maybe just like the, the tarball but not NPM installing everything that goes with it. So basically, I did like this npm install version uh, command here that is going to use uh, metadata from the, from the npm to basically build a list of all the versions, list them, and when you select one, it's going to npm install that exact version. So real quick, uh, NIV, and then I'm gonna npm install, uh, in this case over here, uh, I'm kinda hard coding the name of the package but the idea is kind of argument, and then 
going to be sending into node because I want to be able to parse that metadata to retrieve just the result of that coach call and that thing over there. Yes. I'm going to get only the versions. And then I'm going to turn this into a string. And then I'm going to pipe that into IPT. Oh. Ah, uh, to, uh, what did I go wrong? Okay. Ah, 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 this one is too complicated. I should have saved it for this. Uh, uh. But anyways, let me showcase like Pacument, uh, Pacochi Pacument, what it's going to do, then you're going to get the idea of it. Like so, basically, I'm fetching the metadata for I, uh, for a specific package. In this case, uh, I pipe to itself. Then I can get like a list of versions. Oh no! <laughs> Come on, you didn't touch anything. Oh, oh. And I was about to demo the cool NPM stuff. Oh. What do I do? Oh, it's coming. Yeah. Okay. You just need to walk in, and it's yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so yes. So basically, over here, I'm going to filter just the the versions. So what I was doing with it is that uh, I was going to use Node here real quick to just like get the keys of the version names. Uh, of the version there, so that becomes more more usable. Uh, yeah, so I have a list of all the versions. So this list, uh, what I was doing after that was like concatenating them, like making them a string of like uh, just like like we had the ls in other commands, right? And those I can like pipe into I pipe to. And then we can select one. And then with that selected one, I can just like pipe that into uh, npm install and do like uh, the name of the thing at that result. That thing, I don't think is going to work. I had to do that all that, all that water complex crazy, crazy way oh, like this. And then like this. And then I could like npm install. And then module name at specific version. So I npm install 1.0. Woo! <laughs> so yes, interactive commands are fun. Uh, and as a last one, I wanted to showcase uh, is the no task list. Is uh, is is when I when I start digging into these, like sometimes it gets out of hand. So this one became like a kind of larger project. Like there's a lot of interest from the community, people that ju just jump in and start contributing more. So it became kind of a like larger package because it has like many features around it. It's just not the basic uh, thing for my pipe 2, but it uses iPipe 2 to provide uh, the, the, same, uh, the same interface, right? So basically, NTL is going to list all the scripts you have in that package JSON. And once you select any of them, you just hit enter. It runs, so that's the basic idea of it, right? At that point, it's just like the basic uh, IPipe2 kind of thing. But then it uh, it does all sort of thing. Like and this comes from the community contributions, like uh, keep track of the last run command. So then you run it again, like it's already select, right? Super handy if you're like using it day-to-day -day basis, like. And also, if you just like, if you're just maybe it's a task you're running all the time, then you can remove the L, so it's not. No task list is just run the no task. Like it just runs the latest one, so you can just like be running them again. And whenever you want to switch, you can like go back to the L. You can select multiple items. So like, uh, okay, let's run both of them. Like uh, same thing with the multiple, you still have them selected by default. So yeah, yeah, it's also available on npm. You can uh, npm install ntl, npm install i5.2. Yeah, and. 
I hope you all feel really confident about creating all these workflows. Uh, I'm going to make sure the slides are available so that you can use as a reference to, to start creating your own, right? Uh, yeah. So thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.